All right, so I'm Walt Viscardi. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I got a post-production company, full production company down there. And what I want to talk about today, this is going to be probably the most simple demonstration that you see in all of NAB. Um, but I'm talking about macro impact for micro budget. I mean, we all work with small budget, no budget. Some things you want to work on just because you like working on it. And then, uh, you know, other things, clients come in with a small budget project, and you're like, oh, I, I really want to do that. And just having these tools in the toolbox will change the way that you go about thinking about projects, designing projects, maybe even deciding to take on a project um, because you just know they're there. Now, these tools are incredibly difficult to use. You drag, you drop. You want to see it again? Drag and drop. I can do it a third time if you want to see it. Drag and drop. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, so drag and drop. Literally, there, there's no plug-in to learn. There's no, oh, how does this, uh, what slider do I need to worry about? It all happens with the transform controls. So uh, any NLD you use or if you use After Effects or whatnot, you have these transform controls, and that changes the way that the effect is applied. So right now, if I just hit it, I've got a light leak that comes over, or i got something that creates somewhat of a transition, but I don't want to cover the video. So all I do is I go into transform controls, and depending on how I apply it, it's going to change the look on the video. So there's a hard light. We come out up here to multiply. It makes it a little bit darker. So just playing, you know, literally just play. I'm not doing any keyframes. I'm not trying to figure out, well, how do I, how do I use this slider? So what I use these a lot for, and where they get very powerful especially, is when you start to combine them. So I love to use light leaks as a transition between a cut because it just makes the cut look more interesting when you've got something going between it. But not just the light leak, because everybody likes to use the light leak. So why not add a little something else? Because I think Sean said he's got 10,000 effects total in his package. And we've got the whole thing. I've never gone in to count it, so I'm going to take his word for it that there's actually 10,000. But again, now I'm just going to stack up, and I'm going to drag this here. Thank you. Thank you. That was easy. That was another drag and drop. I really didn't. I don't know why they're applauding, but okay, I'll take it. I'll take anything right now. All right. So now what I've done, I've gone ahead and I've added another little layer of the film, and it looks like we had a little problem with the film. So it's kind of a cool transition. But then just take it one step further, and I just simply click on the video level. I'm going to say, all right, let's bring that up to 150% scale. Now it looks like something went kind of wacky on the cut. It kind of blew up and it made the transition. Super simple. And that took me all of about, actually it took me about a minute because I was doing it slow for you guys, but it takes about 13, 14 seconds to do something like that. And it's because I have it in the toolbox. It gives it an added effect. It's something that the client is not really expecting when they have no budget or low budget. And it makes them want to come back. So it's the simplicity of the tool. So that's just a, that's a real simple look at how it works. And, and the way that you really play with these things is literally just to play with them. Now, talking about no budget, when you're doing your own project. So I'm launching a new television network, and this is a show called Ice Cream Nation. We did the, uh, we did the pilot ourselves. And let me just change this workspace. That's my fault. There we go. So these are literally uh, um, stills that I found in clipart.com that I put together, and they're just sliding down. That's it. It's a very impressive opening for a show, isn't it? Extremely impressive. I can tell. You're all going insane right now. So very, very simple. Now, why did I just do these simple little sliding things, right? Uh, well, because I knew that Sean had all these super cool film effects rolling down and sliding down. And for lack of a better term, I know these are grungy, but they're really clean. They're, they're dirty where they're supposed to be. There's extra grain where they're supposed to be. It's not just that it's a pixelated thing that he blew up to make it look really cool. And by the way, this is a 4K uh, project because our show was shot in 4K. So I just showed you a couple of the HD things. So here he's got all the film effects also in HD. So to make this look interesting, I said, okay, I'm just going to slide these down. These images took me about 15 minutes to make in Photoshop. Brought it in here. I don't know. It took me about 10 seconds to slide them down. And now... Of course, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit here so we can see. All right, so you always got to start something like this with picture start, right? Well, Sean happens to have a nice little picture start sliding in. So there we go. Set that as our in, play it a little bit, set that as our out. I'm going in super slow motion because if I was doing this in real speed, I would be blinding you with my speed and you wouldn't know what I was doing. So I'm trying to go nice and slow. So there we go, picture start. Cool, right? Now we got our sliding going on. 
what should we use to put on top of it? Any one of these. That, that's kind of cool. So just like I did in, uh, in uh, Premiere, drag, and I drop. Now I'm over here in my transform controls, right? Now I got even more choices to do. What do they do? I don't know. Just start clicking them and see what they do. Okay, what does Lighten do? All right, it still holds a lot of that light on top. I don't like that. I can't see the girl through it. How about soft light? That looks a little better. I'm getting some of that film look. Now suddenly I have something that looks sort of kind of like it might have been done on film, and I'm adding a little motion to it. It's got a little retro look to it. Um, now to go into the next one, all it is is just a cut to the next picture. Let's just grab a couple frames of this. There we go. Super slow motion. Because again, if I was working in full speed, you people would just be amazed. So, <laughs> Not that I'm full of myself or anything, but you know, I'm just having fun here. I hope you all are having a great Monday. Monday's always the best day because by Wednesday you're going to be like, why in the world did I ever, I'll never come back to this again. Seriously, I've been coming here, my first show was 1998. That was a long time. I stayed at the Frontier. Anybody remember the Frontier? Wow, if you remember the frontier, you've been coming here way too long. So there you go. You know, that's probably a little bit too much. Um, but that's how simple this is. So here's the actual look at it. This is the actual one that I made for the show, kind of going in, in super slow motion here. Hey, Sean, is the audio for uh, the playback working? Let's see. I forgot to check. Here's the actual. I think we will. Maybe not. No. Well. Huh? Yeah, I know. We got signal, but oh well. But there it is playing in real time. So super simple effect. It literally took me from the time that I downloaded the photos until I was done with it, maybe an hour. Super simple. That's the whole thing about rampant design. It's super, super simple effect. So now here's a project that is absolutely positively no budget, a public service announcement. Anybody do public service announcements, right? So uh, I am an animal lover. If you know anything about me, I've got Molly the Wonder Dog who comes to work with me every single day, and she's a rescue. And so uh, Fix Georgia Pets came to us, and they, they were gonna do an animal, uh, animal overpopulation public service announcement. Just like those Sarah McLaughlin, oh my God, I wanna kill myself when that ad comes on TV, and we decided we don't wanna do that. We wanna have some nice animals. Yeah, they're in cages. And, and Sean happens to have these uh, animated mats that I never really knew what I was going to do with. So the first thing I did, and we got the music right there, but then the next thing that I actually did, I've never done this before, I actually edited the entire piece with the mats first to kind of give myself a sense of how the mats might work. And then once I knew how the mats were going to be set up, I, I could go in and then grab the animals and the flow of the animals, how I might want them to appear. And in fact, this one right here, actually, is the one that triggered the idea because there's a line in the piece that says, one dog can be responsible for 60,000 puppies in one year. And I remember that I had this cool mat that, that kind of revealed everything. And I don't know why I came up with this idea, but I was like, you know what? Now I know what the mats are, and I know what the flow is going to be. Literally, I created this PSA in one day. So now... I create a new timeline, and all I do is I roughly put the animals where they need to be. I don't have to be perfect, because I'm going to use the mat to create alpha channels. So there's a, there's a, a dog there. There's three. They're just kind of, sort of, where they need to be. Now, I, I don't like the way that Premiere Pro does the matting and the keying and all that with math, so I still send it to After Effects. For me, it's just faster. I've been using After Effects since it was COSA. I don't even remember what year they changed over to After Effects. So I sent the whole thing on into After Effects. And so here's the exact same timeline in After Effects. Let's get it to where everybody can see it. All right. So here we go. Let me scroll down. Come on, stay with me. There you are. OK, so here's the exact same timeline in After Effects. And you can see all the animals just kind of sitting there. And there's our animated mat. So all the mat is is eight boxes that are going to slide down and reveal. And I want the animals to be revealed on top of that. And I've got five layers of video, and I've got eight boxes. So in order to do this and make sure that the animal stays on the box I want, each animal has to have its own mat. So the first thing I do is I duplicate this four times, so I've got five mats for my five animals. And then the mats have to be on top of the video layer. 
Again, I am going in super slow motion because your eyes would be bleeding if I was going full speed trying to do this for you. Okay, so the very first dog, actually I'm going to start on the top, put it here so I can see all the mats closed. So here's my first animal. I color coded everything so we can see it easier, but my first animal is right there in the lower left. So all I do is I grab the mat, and I'm in quarter scale, so it's a little bit hard to see, but it just makes everything run a little bit faster. Go ahead and cut that, and now I'm going to go ahead and apply the alpha mat. Okay, there's my cat sitting there. I'm a dog person personally, but I don't like to see cats, you know, left behind in the shelters either. So our next animal is right there. So we're going to go ahead and cut that mat. That's this box. Again, it's a little harder for you guys to see because I am in quarter scale, so it's kind of knocking down the resolution a little bit. Okay, so just go ahead and change this to an alpha mat. You see how incredibly difficult this is? I mean, this is so incredibly difficult to do. Uh, okay, so we go here. That's the whole thing about rampant design. Sean has done all the hard work for us. There is not a single keyframe in this entire commercial, and yet every piece of video animates on. Oh, I went uh, one animal too low, so you can't see it. There he is. Got to cut away this mat, and then you'll see the other guy show through. There we go. See, I, I want to make sure that each animal only stays on one box, and that's why I've created all these, these five layers. And then finally, this last mat's real easy. I know it's going to be that one big dog over here. It's going, to, it's going to be on all four of these. So let me just cut around that and apply the mat. And even just going slow here in about 30 seconds, now I've got the animals are going to be revealed just like that. And I haven't done a single keyframe. Not a single keyframe in this whole thing. Sean had done all the work for me. All I had to do was just pick the video. So here's our uh, full frame dog coming on there. And then one more time, here's, uh, I'll just show you this again, just in case you don't believe me how easy this is. So again, I've got three, one, two, and three. So uh, this guy right here, that's the, uh, the animal on the right. Let's just go ahead and cut a mat. So I've got an entire 30-second PSA with fully animated mats and not a single keyframe to be found in the entire spot. Cut out the middle cat. There we go. I just thought it was kind of funny to sandwich the cat between two dogs, you know, right where a cat would never want to be. So we have, uh, we have Molly the Wonder Dog, and then we have Ernie and Bert, two cats, whom I named. They were almost Ron and Harry, and I just I said, no, we got to go classic. we got to go to old school, Ernie and Bert. So now, again, all I did was just cut three mats. I mean, how, this, is, this is After Effects 101, you know? So now I've got these three animals. I'll just go ahead and hit play and let it walk through a little bit. But look, not a single keyframe, and so on and so forth. So I do this for the whole thing. Now, you can see that I just roughly have to cut the mat because uh, all I got to do is kind of get in that general area. Now, for the one dog, my concept was I wanted to take one dog and then turn it into a lot of dogs. And his mat right here, I ended up pre-comping it. And in this particular case, I did go ahead and actually shape all the dogs exactly to the side because I had to because there were so many of them. But I color-coded all the rows, so it was very easy to follow. The red rows are on top, and then it just goes across, one, two, three, four. In the actual commercial, I, uh, I used uh, Magic Bullet Looks. I probably used every version of looks. The idea was to always show the same dog, but make every layer look a little bit different. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just using the hue controls. And um, as I do this, you can see just how incredibly difficult and time consuming it is to change the color of each animal and make each one look unique. I mean, I could probably spend all of, I don't know, 90 seconds doing this, and uh, I would have something that looks totally different. So. And, you know, with Magic Bullet Looks, you're like, click, click, that's good, click, click, that's good, I like it, darken, do this, do that. So, so the idea is just to create all of these animals. And then if I go back to the comp, you can see how Sean has created the animation for me so all of these dogs are just being wiped on. And it looks like, and in fact, the client said to me, I can't believe you spent all that time doing this. And I said, yes, I spent a lot more time, I'm going to tell you, a lot more time than what I really did because, oh boy, it is so hard to do this, let me tell you. So there you go. So there, there's, um, there's the After Effects part of it. So now I render it out, and I come back over to Premiere Pro, and the text is so incredibly difficult too. This is just Premiere generated text.
right? So start to finish the whole spot probably took me maybe four hours, maybe. Um, probably less than that. Now, I know that the audio uh, does not appear to be playing here, but I should have. Where did it go? I thought I had the finished spot here as well. But I don't. Oh, I apologize for that. Um, that's weird. I thought I did. Okay, well, I don't. So, but from start to finish, hey, how long do you think it would take this thing to render? It's a Mac Pro. Anybody want to guess? Oh, there it goes. It's, it's playing for you. So you can get a sense of how it looks. And when the client saw it the first time, I mean, they were almost in tears when they saw it. Um, I wish you could hear the music, because even the music choice, it's an uplifting piece of music. We wanted to keep it upbeat. We wanted to keep your attention on the piece the whole time so that you won't hopefully turn away. And there's Victoria Stilwell from Animal Planet. She actually lives in Atlanta. Lovely, lovely lady. We love this woman to death. And there's the piece. Four hours, start to finish, not a single keyframe in that entire piece at all. And that's just a combination of magic bullet looks, rampant design, and that's all original footage that they shot in about an hour. And they gave it to me and turned it around. So macro impact for a micro budget. I just knew that it was there, and because I had the rampant design tools, it drove the look of the entire piece. If I didn't have the rampant design tools, I probably would have just done a straight cut with some dissolved, and then I would have gone into resolve and just gave some really funky color design. But this gave me a, a whole new avenue, a way of thing, uh, doing things I never would have had before. Um, I have one, one more uh, thing to show you, which is actually um, another Victoria Stillwell. It is arson dogs. And this is kind of cool because this is um, how they train dogs to be arson investigators. And they're, they're training the trainers and the dogs. And all of these dogs are rescues. They're all rescues. And I know you can't hear it, but this is the basic open. Uh, if any of, uh, any of you read Creative Cow or on Twitter, you know Kylie Wall. She writes a lot. She actually edited this for me. Um, so it's just a nice little straight cut piece. And um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to do something like this. And then you see that fantastic logo reveal. So this is all about arson dogs. And when they came to talk to us, I was like, oh, my God, you're not going to believe this fire we had. And I literally ran to our library. I grabbed it, threw in some of the rampant design. And she's like, well, that's cool, but these dogs come in after the building to burn. I said, dang it. I said, how about the open? Can we do fire for the open? I mean, it's arson dog. The logo is a, a dog on a fire. She's like, oh, yeah, no, you can do that. Sure, why not? So uh, in After Effects, you can tell I'm kind of excited about this stuff. It's a lot of fun. And, and I, I just love the fact that these animals are rescues. So one of the cool things about Rampant, I showed you a little bit of that right in the beginning, how you layer stuff. He has really cool elements. I call this, this is kind of like, you know, when you shoot a scene inside somebody's home and you hear the traffic and the noise outside, you never see it, but you hear it and it makes it more believable. So these are the sparks that make the fire more believable. So here's his really cool fire. Oops. Here's his really cool fire, right? Really nice fireball. So we just took that and stretched it out. And if I just play this, if I go ahead and turn off the embers and I play it, it's a really cool fireball. And there's a few embers. Oh, maybe I should actually play the uh, comp. So sorry. There you go. So I'll play it. And it starts off really cool with this big white thing. And... I'm going to turn off the other flames. So there's no embers. It's just against black. It, like, it needs some sort of environment, just like when you put that sound outside the room of the traffic, it makes it more believable. So if I go ahead and turn the embers back on, now, we, now it looks like things are burning, right? So we've got the two layers of the big fireball, which then goes into the embers. And then what we've got actually is the same piece of fire twice. Here it is. It wasn't quite big enough. We wanted it to be a little bit bigger, so all we did was just duplicate it. And then what you do when you do something like this, you just simply offset the end points, because if you have the end points exactly the same, they're going to be mirror dancing flames. So just offset the end point a little bit. So with just four layers of rampant design and probably about, I don't know, maybe five minutes of thinking how we were going to layer it out, there's the open, the arson dogs. And then I go back over to Premiere Pro, and that, that slick little open that, uh, that you saw just a second ago, which was just straight cut, I'm just going to shuttle on through to where the uh, show's... Oh, wait, that's a sizzle. Wrong one. 
There you are. So here's how we change the look of that. Let me get that out of the way. So this is that same straight cut open that you just saw. And there, everything on here is rampant design. And all of that text, oh, it's in quarter resolution. I apologize. But all of that text is even done in Premiere Pro as well. So, and it's the power of rampant design that's allowing us to make it look like that. And it's so freaking simple. It really, really is. Uh, I wish I'd have shown you that in full resolution. And that is really, I mean, that's literally it that I have to show you. It, it's the fact that it's not, it, we don't go to look for these tools when the time comes that we need them. We have them in the toolbox. They're always with us. So, and in fact, we've even gone to the point now where we have his entire library sitting on our server at all times. So we can always grab at it. We can always look at And we use his design for inspiration. Oh, here's what we can do to make it better. We're not trying to do anything cheesy. We're not just trying to do the effect for the, for the sake of an effect. It's the fact that they're super, super simple to use. And that, that's basically the whole point of what I wanted to show you guys today. It's not, I didn't do a single keyframe. I didn't slide a slider. I didn't do anything. All I did was apply them and then play with the transfer controls. Do you guys have any specific questions? I'd be more than happy to answer questions, both about this or even you know, Premiere or anything else. Yes, no? No? Was that useful, I hope? Yay. Well, have a great rest of the day here at NAB and a great rest of the week. Oh, I like that. I got a canned salute. Very nice. Very nice. I worked hard for that. <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys.